How I got involved in rugby coaching is the question, and um, it was an extension of my education, basically. I was a phys ed graduate. Um, coaching sport was part of that, and I thought I needed to do that well, just as, as an extension of the job. So I was a secondary school teacher who coached cricket and rugby, and um, I had a love of those two games. I enjoyed the, the team aspect and working together with a group of people to produce something that you're proud of and thought was special. So uh, I guess it was a natural step to, into, into rugby coaching. You're always trying to get better and you need to change with the people that you're coaching. So the way I coached in the 1970s and 80s and 90s and so on, they wouldn't put up with me now. So I was a pretty authoritarian coach in those days. And to be frank, you know, the, the young kids that you coached uh, were used to that. That's how they were taught. Probably quite authoritarian at home as well with parents. But over the generations and as time goes on, there's more consensus in families and more consensus in school teaching. And the young guys you coach today want to have an involvement. So if you coach in an authoritarian manner today, you wouldn't survive. Not at the top level anyway. So you just need to change with the clientele that you're coaching. And I've, been, I've managed to do that most of the time. Sometimes they give me a bit of a nudge and kick me in the right direction. So that relationship with your players and being honest with each other is important. And also with your fellow coaches. You know, I coach with Wayne Smith and Steve Hansen, and we're pretty honest with each other and, and, and give each other feedback. So I think it's very important to be able to, to be modern and be with the time that you're coaching, if that you understand what I'm saying. So authoritarian in the 1980s, maybe the 1990s, more consensus now, more involving other coaches in the team. You're coaching over those 37 years, you could break those down into different experiences. I was very fortunate um, at Auckland Grammar School, I started coaching. And Auckland Grammar School is a, is a state school in Auckland um, with a privileged zone, if you like. So there's a lot of boys who come from um, from quality families uh, who are in a higher echelon, if you like, socially. And I haven't explained that particularly well, but I think coaches and players, you know what I'm talking about. So they're quite privileged. Um, it was an ideal environment. The headmaster at the time was a guy named John Graham, who was, who was an ex-All Black captain. And he gave me the opportunity. He was a mentor of mine. And I wanted to please him. And he also coached me over the years. And, and I enjoyed the way he, he, he taught and coached. He's very direct. But he gave people opportunity. There was no grey. Um, and I probably took after, after him quite a bit. But in that time, I, um, I learned how to coach. Because it was the ideal environment. You coached after school. You didn't have to coach under lights and you had a, a group of young guys who just loved the game and loved being there. So I tried to foster that enjoyment of the game. Um, so I think them being stimulated was important. Them learning new things was important. So we try to introduce things that perhaps hadn't been seen in the game before, but they probably were, but probably was, was happening, but I didn't realise it. And so that they were constantly stimulated the way they played the game. Um, and as I say, uh, it was a very, um, very advantageous situation because you had the ideal environment with a highly motivated group of young people and all you had to do was main maintain that stimulation and um, they were very successful. But going on from there, I, I went on to club rugby, so schoolboy rugby, they were 16 or 18 year olds and then I started to coach senior rugby in Auckland. Um, I was ambitious. D during my time at Auckland Grammar School, I'd actually set some goals for myself, and one of the goals was to be the all-black coach. <laughs> Looking back on it, uh, it was a pretty arrogant sort of statement on top of the list of goals that you want to achieve. But I think you need to be goal-orientated. You need to have a pathway. You need to have a goal at the end of that pathway, and, and coaching the all-blacks was one of those things. Um, and so I needed to make the next step, and the next step was to coach 
senior rugby in Auckland. The club was university. The first day I went to university rugby club for pre-season training, there was eight guys turned up. I thought, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, but we worked at it and, um, and moulded a side together. Um, I worked very hard at recruiting well, and I think as a coach you need to do that. Uh, so I recruited quality players from around Auckland to assist the quality players that were in the side. And we finished up um, being a very strong side that competed at the top level at Auckland Rugby for quite some time. A different environment and totally. You know, it's, it was night time coaching, under lights, 7 to 8.30, twice a week. Uh, we used to meet on a Saturday prior to the game at one of the players' place, places have a bit of a talk about how we're going to play and, and went out and did the business on the Saturday. Uh, so from the ideal environment, we went into a demanding environment. But again, um, my expectations of those guys that we would play some outstanding rugby, um, um, they, would, they would push each other. So there was a lot of accountability on each other from each other, which I think was important because senior rugby um, in this country and perhaps around the world, is, it was an amateur game in those days. Uh, there was a lot of guys playing for the love of the game and for the fun of the game. And we just wanted to put an edge on that. And the only way I could put that edge on that was to have senior players in that team putting edge on each other, demanding excellence from each other, and as well as me trying to do the same thing. But I couldn't do that in that amateur period with 22 players every week and get a result. So I needed to use the senior players in the team to provide that edge. And we had some players of some quality in that team. Uh, Grant Fox, who is the greatest point scorer in Auckland rugby, and uh, it was one of those players. Sean Fitzpatrick, who you may have heard of, was one of those players. John Drake, who played in the Rugby World Cup in 1987 as a tight head prop, was another. David Kirk, who captained the All Blacks in the 1987 World Cup, was in that team as well. So there was a number of quality players, obviously, and I haven't mentioned a number of, of provincial players on that side. So it was, a, as I say, it was a matter of, of making sure that the senior players got each other up to a high standard every week and, and to do the business. But it was very demanding time in coaching. Going on from there, I coached an Auckland Colts team, which was an under-21 side. And at that stage, I had a pretty responsible job as a, as a school teacher. I was a deputy principal of a school of 1,300 kids. And I thought I needed to pull off a wee bit my rugby involvement and put more time into, into my job that they paid me for. So the Auckland Colts team played probably um, eight or ten games at the end of the season, in a representative season, but it was stimulating coaching. Um, again, it was, it was evening coaching, but you had the, the cream of Auckland rugby. And at that time, the Auckland representative side um, was, I think, the best side in the world. This was the late 80s, early 90s. They held the Ranfurly Shield for 64 challenges which is a record in New Zealand rugby and it will stand for many years. And our motivation was to play a rugby of a standard better than the Auckland A team. So we set high standards and we wanted to outscore them each week. We often played curtain roses to them, so they may be playing Canterbury in the game and we had played Canterbury Colts, Canterbury under 21s, and we wanted to make sure the differential between the two teams <laughs> was greater for the Colts than it was for the senior side. So that was our motivation. A lot of those young guys wanted to play in the senior side, and that was their ambition and objective going forward. And um, so we set that sort of standard, and that was our expectation. In that side, the captain for two years was Pat Lamb, who's now the current coach of the Blues the, the, and the Super 15 franchise. And we had some great players who played in that team who, who went on to play for the All Blacks. And I could mention many players, like Craig Kinders played in that side, Inga Turglamala, uh, Mark Carter, um, 
Craig Dowd, um, Otto Brown, uh, Robin Brook, I could go on and on. So there was quality players. That team won 39 games out of 40, but was stimulated to get to the next level and played the rugby to try and ensure they did that.